Hey everybody, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant, who is back from Disney World after celebrating. How many years have you two been married, Jill? Okay. Uh, years. Technically, it's a number. Yeah. I know. Uh, <laughs> That's not a number. Come on, we're no. looking for a number. Technically 13. 13, but it, all right. It, it's actually... We've been together much longer than that, <laughs> so we were just slowly so getting married. <laughs> on the uh, slowly getting married on the anniversary, like of uh, yeah, what is the anniversary date of your wedding certificate? <laughs> yeah, October first, twenty eleven. All yeah. right, so it's been a minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you guys have fun in Disneyland? I saw Steve posting some pictures in the Discord. Yes, we we sure do. Did we had a, a wonderful meal at cafe orleans in new orleans square in disneyland and it had a, a delicious uh uh oh new orleans style uh uh, uh <laughs> prepared meat which was delicious the, the spices were excellent and it was just really really good <laughs> it was it was one of the best <laughs> the best most uh uh buttery smooth meat i had ever tasted it, it melted like chocolate in your mouth it's awesome all right that's cool man you didn't have to like run after it try to catch it awesome. no exactly and i'm not a huge meaty meat eater but this was incredible nice <laughs> i'm glad you guys uh had a fun time with that maybe you get 13 more years out of steve before you chase him off yeah <laughs> yeah i got faith in you steve you do know 13 yeah. man easy Probably another <laughs> Absolutely. 13 after that. <laughs> Good times, everybody. So if you are keeping track, I'm getting ready to release publicly the Raspberry Pi project I've been working on for the past month to uh, try to get people interested in ultra low power gaming servers. Uh, that'll be out publicly for everybody Friday ish <laughs> somewhere with a lot of documentation. It's a nice little tight five minute video on one of those crazy ideas that I started with, and it just ended up working enough to where I started pursuing it, and here we are. You can get uh, early access to that if you want on the Interfacing Linux Patreon, but if you don't, just chill out, subscribe to Interfacing Linux on YouTube, and it'll be out Friday, along with all the documentation. And, you know, this is my story. You know those biscuit recipes? You show up and you're like, I need a recipe for biscuits, and it starts off with like six paragraphs of like, I was born in a small town. It's kind of like that, where I take you through the journey of like, this is how this started out. It was a crazy idea, and I walk you through, and it was a very slick mm -hmm. way for me to sneak in documentation on how to set up a Trackmania server, which doesn't properly exist on the internet. There you go. Yeah. Fun <laughs> times. So, as it says right here on the title, we're here to talk about horns going off in the background. Yeah. No, we're here to talk about the <laughs> Thunderbird Android beta, because back in 2022, yeah. Thunderbird bought K9 mail. Yes, they did. And since then, they've been doing well, something. Now that something is ready for the public, this is the testing checklist that's kind of flying by right there. And they would like you to poke at it, mostly focusing around reading and writing, receiving and sending messages, you know, the old emails. And uh, yeah, I, I was going to test it out because I use K9. And they have a K9 transfer, you know, K9 Android mail client. And it unfortunately requires using the K9 beta, which I had to go back and look at because, you know, initially I downloaded the app. It's available in the Play Store. Go play around with it. Or it's, it's also in the GitHub, the APK. You can just download it, sideload it. And that's how you want to go about it. And I had K K9 and it's easy. You know, I'd never exported anything from K9, but it was easy. It did the K9. I saved it, downloads folder, opened up. Thunderbird and is like, hey, there it is. And it did it. And it said, re-enter all of your passwords. And I'm like, no, I don't know any of those passwords. I'm going to have to like go into, you know, Mount Doom, and like dig those out. I don't have any, I know where they're at, but like they're hidden even from me. So I'm like, uh, hopefully <laughs> that's going to get fixed, that password transfer, because I don't want to transfer if I have to go digging out, because I got a lot of email accounts in there for business. Yeah, and that's one do. of the reasons I didn't want mm -hmm. to use a beta client for K9. I'm like, I need this to work. I can't, this is not testing in production for this one. We got a couple of screenshots on the Google Play page because if you go to the GitHub page, they commit the ultimate crime of having a GUI app. Sorry, Thunderbird. I will call every single 
person out for this. If you get a GUI <laughs> app, you need to have screenshots and you get a page. Do it. Quit fighting it. It'll come naturally. Let's, let's see. What, what do the screenshots look like? It kind of looks like, uh, you know, unsurprisingly, a bit like canine mail. I had better have a dark mm -hmm. mode. If it does not have a dark mode, I'm not going to use it. A um, little bit excited for this. I'm, you know, yeah. been waiting for this. Hopefully it takes a lot of inspiration from K9Mail. K9Mail is great if you have email, if you like your Gmail accounts, and if you got a bunch of email accounts, you know, I got Linux Gamecast, I got Interface yeah. Linux, and I got some other work stuff that, you know, that nice, simple, unified email um, inbox. And let's face it, Gmail on Android is a bloated piece of bloat, McBloat bloat. It's just a chalky, heavy client for no right? I guess it's too busy hoovering up all your data bits. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, full <laughs> release is going to be planned in, oh, yeah, at the end of this month. So they're speed running this one. Yeah, <laughs> like, they sure Here's the are. beta. Here's like the uh, middle testing part, and it's going to be out at the end of the month. And something Pedro pointed out, uh, you know, I'm, he, I posted this in our uh, super secret Discord earlier this week when I saw the news come out and I'm like, Hey, mm -hmm. this is Nate and Pedro's like, yes. One thing they're going to be adding is the ability to import all of your desktop Thunderbird contacts. Yeah, that's, and, that's awesome. But you got to get those passwords in there. I don't care. Like what security hole I need to open up because <laughs> man, I don't have a document with all those passwords in them. So please make that uh, a thing. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think, Jill? Do you play around with it? I sure did. So like Ven, you know, I was going to test the canine transfer that includes five of my email accounts, but I will wait for the stable release. I just decided not to deal with it right now. It, it, so what I did is I installed the Thunderbird beta for testers on the Google Play Store and brought in my Gmail account for testing. I thought that would be quick and easy. And it was. It set up my Gmail account easily and beautifully and so far I've been able to read fetch and send emails and I will continue to test and just sent my request to join the join the Thunderbird Android beta mailing list and um, I was waiting for approval yesterday but but within about 20 minutes after writing the show notes I got approved so so now I need to go in the forum and and give them my test results as a, as I'm further testing the awesome application and by the way it's so i i just i don't like like ven i don't like using the default gmail uh client on android drives me up the, up the wall and it's a slow it's very slow i liked it back in the day it used to be nice it used to be slick yeah, and it's, it's yeah fast. it's just gotten chuggy yeah and like there's certain things <laughs> i don't expect to be chuggy you know this is why many many shows ago I was real big on, you know, different alternate swipe keyboards because the Gboard is also a mm. big system resource hog. And resource it's not like, hog. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm using an S6 tablet. I don't have a budget device here. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it shouldn't be slow and chuggy. Uh, you yeah. bring up the, uh, this, where do you give your feedback? Sure, your feedback on the Thunderbird. Now, I get it. Email clients going to have a mailing list, but... Oh boy, that's a that's a tough sell in 2024, man. Uh, even to, <laughs> to get to get me to sign up for a mailing list, I gotta have like a big problem. I'm gonna give you a bit of advice uh, for anybody listening. They have a GitHub page, so if you do run into issues with yeah. the Android client, leave an issue on the GitHub issue tracker. Yeah, you can do that. Also, I was thinking of that, doing that as well, but I haven't had an issue yet. So, yay! Let's let's hope that that stays as I go through the. Uh, the checklist of testing. And I wanted to mention that this article was written by Monica Ans Madden, who's a dear friend of mine. We've talked about her before here on Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday. And she's been working in the Linux community for years and did a great job in the article explaining the process of testing the Thunderbird beta so that even new people in the community can test it. It's really easy to do. So that option is there. But if you like to strike up a chat, they also have a uh, Matrix. Have you heard about Matrix? Well, yeah, they, absolutely. They got one. Go <laughs> check it out, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if I want to get fancy when I measure my resources on my system, I'm thinking HTOP. 
But if I want that extra sparkle and the extra glow, I, I'll open up BTOP and enlarge my terminal <laughs> just slightly because the default size I like my terminal at yeah, is gotta... just too small <laughs> for BTOP. That's the main reason I don't use BTOP. However, some of you like, okay, you know what? I'm not even, I like GNOME System Monitor. I'll open that every now and then. Mm -hmm. Why I don't open GNOME System Monitor? Because it opens over here ah. every time. <laughs> that, that's why, which, you know, this is my most left monitor. It is not set as the primary, and it does not respect that this monitor <laughs> is set as primary. So uh, okay. that's the main reason I don't use it. I like the look of it, but we can do better in 2024, and Jill's going to tell you all about it. Yeah. So one of my favorite tools for monitoring system resources just got a major update. Mission Center and version 0 0.6 has been released. Mission Center, as we have talked about here before in LWW, is a Rust-based GTK4 library Edwada system monitoring tool and is the Swiss Army knife for monitoring system resource usage, such as CPU, RAM, GPU, Ethernet, and disk, etc. And it has a nice user interface that looks a lot like the classic Windows system monitor app with big graphs that are really easy to read. And the big update that all of us Linux users will love, and that is very rare in our Linux, eco <laughs> our Linux ecosystem, is that there is now a fan monitoring page in Mission Center. Yes, a fan page that tracks your computer's fans and reports their PWM, RPM, and temperature info if it is supported by your system. That, now, before you run out, everybody <laughs> is thinking like, oh, cool, put it on my laptop, it's going to work great. No. <laughs> No, right. yeah. Let's look at this chart right here. Uh, list of tested systems it. and laptops are expected when noted. All right, laptop, laptop, system 76, you get four crowns. Max RPMs might not be reported, <laughs> however. HP, nope. Framework, nope. Lenovo, nope. ThinkPad, kind of. You get two crowns and a couple of checks. Asus, is, <laughs> yeah. uh, two nopes, two checks. Dell's uh, one crown, two green checks, and a nope. Uh, surprisingly, the Asus ROG Strix custom build works like a charm. MSI something, cut. nope. So keep all that in mind, um, yeah. but it's getting there. Early days. They're, they're it starting is it early out. days. Yeah. I found uh, that one of the systems I built with an Asus motherboard that, that was um, uh, recognized by the OpenRGB did work with uh, Mission Center fan control. So that, that was cool. That was my only system that did, though, <laughs> of like the three I tested. <laughs> <laughs> I get why people like that. I, I've yeah. never missed that because I never went through like the gooey thing. Um, you know, I'll see like uh, our, our remaining, we're down to like one resident Windows user, Justin and Discord. And, uh, and they'll post like the system resource usage and it'll be like the Windows thing. Like I've never had that in my life, so I don't have anything to miss, but I'm glad that something like this is there. Um, and all of this is uh, coming from OMG Humbuntu. That's yeah. right, UK. You can find the link directly to it in our show notes if you want to give it a full read. And of course, yeah. it's free to download. No problems there. Um, I'm yeah, just not big on the GUIs. Yeah, yeah. I, like you're I talking know, about I, I fans, you. you know, and the fan support. Yeah. When I want to see fans, what do I do? I, I open a terminal, I type in sensors. And I scroll up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do that a lot too. <laughs> where my fans are because that sensors, LM sensors, like just picks them up and like, it's been a long time since I ran into a situation where LM sensors didn't pick up the fans, but, uh, you know, you, you like graphs and I run into graphs too. Like I understand the yeah. importance of this stuff, like visually communicating stuff. I think about this a lot when I'm doing videos for interfacing Linux. I'm like, people want to see the pretty lines dance around the screen. <laughs> yes. Yes. They do. Well, I, I've I shown, know. You know, if I show yeah. you H top, Jill, you look at it and you, you know what's going on. You can see that. Yeah, absolutely. And I've shown yeah. people who are system administrators. <laughs> <laughs> very technically competent people H top and they're like I have no idea well, what's that what, what do you try yeah. like I have no idea There's a, I'm like huh fair though you got to think about it you know it's it's not yeah. stupidity it's just ignorance so they're like oh okay here now let me explain to you this represents you know each core and then I'm like thread mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. here's your memory and they're like oh okay I get it <laughs> but you know again they're, they're they're custom to squiggly lines yeah well, I use top with, you know, custom themes and whatnot, which is, is really cool. And of course, HTOP is one of my defaults. 
But it is nice, actually. And it's not a default when it's installed in Debian. That's the, you want me to drag <laughs> Debian out in the middle of a parking lot and shame it with a bell? That's the one right there. That is the first thing I type when I install Debian that says command not found. Is yeah. HTOP. I forget every time because it's just like, even Raspberry Pi, HTOP, default. Love it. It's right there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, uh, what's cool about Mission Center also is a lot of us are, are used to now the, the GUI user interfaces in the system BIOS. And it looks very similar. The graphs look very similar to the ones that are in the BIOSes. So that's, that's very nice to have consistency there. There we go. Go check it out. Now, something I talked about on Saturday, you know, something we talked about on this show months and months ago, more probably more than once, is old Ploopy. Remember yes. Ploopy? The Ploopy, the trackball mouse, mouse. And the trackball. Right. Yeah. Big fan <laughs> of trackballs. This is uh, my Mark three. This is Mark, like Mark 2.5. This is the one with the forever switches that I, that I put together uh, when I got tired yeah. of, uh, I have, I think I have three of these shells, but building your own input device is pretty <laughs> neat. And that's what Charlie's done. Yay. That's what he's done. He's taken the time to build a modern grip style mouse that basically anybody can build at home. Now, with enough patience, <laughs> I should say with <laughs> enough patience. And you know what? It looks different. I saw it on Saturday. That looks like the Godot logo for some reason in my head. I don't know. Yeah, I could be wrong. Let me know what true. you think. Uh, some of the neat features in this include variable grip, for the grip and palm and the ability to tilt. That's right. This thing can kind of lean up on its side. Then we have this thing called snub nose. I don't know about that. that. That wackiness. It gives your mouse like a very aggressive look. Like maybe it's a car a little bit, but it gives you the option to like jack up the clicky bits. Let me go ahead and scroll down and see if there we go. Look at that maximum snub nosing going on right there. <laughs> That's what that looks like. All right. It sure does. <laughs> <laughs> kind of wild. I mean, it's kind of spacious. I, you know what? If anything, this looks different. And let's be honest, if this thing wasn't 3D printed, I'm sure like a, a Razor or whoever would, uh, Corsair, they want to charge like 500 bucks for it. Like it is the ultimate, da -da 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 -da, whatever. You know, it's got speed holes all in it. What is it? It's powered by a, uh, an Arduino uh, Pro Micro Controller. And there it is leaning. Aw, look at it. It yeah. looks like it's taking a wee. So <laughs> they do say it's a bit on the heavy side, to which I'll yeah. say, well, what are we calling heavy, my friend? Is it 130 grams, to which I laughed mm -hmm. heartily because no, 130 grams is not quite heavy. I guess uh, maybe you are the type of person who likes a gerbil that is so light on your desktop, if you sneeze, it goes flying off. I, however, am not. I, I want a little weight to my mouse. I'm not alone. Joe, you like a heavy mouse, I, right? Oh, absolutely. At 130 <laughs> grams, all I can say is like this, <laughs> this mouse needs a sandwich. It definitely yeah. <laughs> does. Uh, there's a complete like breakdown of the PCB, the instructions. The, I'm not even going to, this, this is, it comes with a full on manual. Like I yeah. would expect this to like, if I fix it, sold like a build your own mouse and they did like a nice glossy, it would look like this. This is just incredible documentation. I'm a documentation yeah. snob and I'm going to say A plus number one on this, Yay. along with a YouTube video covering the build process. Oh, I love to see it. The only downside is it's not really a downside. It's just a reality. The parts mm -hmm. list, the bill of material, to put all this together, assuming that you have a 3D printer is going to be about 200 bucks. So it ain't a cheap one. Yeah, love to see it. All right, one last thing before we get out of here. Raspberry mm. Pi AI. Yes. Because we got to put an AI in everything. I'm <laughs> looking for the uh, Raspberry Pi uh, AI Ethernet cable. I don't know, man. We're just putting AI <laughs> on everything. They've decided to put AI on a camera. Yeah. So the Raspberry Pi AI camera has just been released. And it can, this one is cool because it can be connected to all Raspberry Pi models, including the Raspberry Pi Zero. That's, that's pretty awesome. And the AI camera has a 12 meg megapixel Sony IMX500 intelligent vision center sensor 
as well as several sensor modes, including 4056 by 3040 at 10 frames per second and 2028 by 1520 at 30 frames per second and a 78 degree field of view with manually adjusted focus. And it has a Raspberry Pi 2040 chipset for neural networking and uh, firmware wear management. This is really cool. And there's I some mean, Yeah, you can see it working right too. here. It's detecting, let's see, that's a cow over here on the left. We have a clown yeah. uh, on the far <laughs> right. I think that's a monster truck. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's doing a good job. And the, and the it, video works real well, too. You're seeing it. like the probability. It's like, yeah, it might be a cup. 13 percent that maybe mouse 50 percent now this is all like mm -hmm. training with the models and stuff like this this is definitely yeah. play around with because like this is not the first time we've seen ai you know enhance powered cameras this has normally been the field the realm of uh the jets and nanos the jetson series from team yes. green so to see this come over to raspberry pi is kind of interesting to play around yeah. with i'm going to take a little bit of issue here because on mm -hmm. this on, on their web page they get a raspberry pi 5 without active cooling on it running ai uh, yes <laughs> um on behalf of everything i'm involved with who y'all trying to fool yeah <laughs> all right stop it, it. put the active cooler quickly. on it in that picture yeah. <laughs> like come on oh so hey, look, there's a video <laughs> yeah see look at this video i think that was that's really cool that's what uh this is technology they're using in cars and using in uh, moving moving uh vehicles and whatnot <laughs> so it's really cool that you can do it on oh, a raspberry it's got pie a nice on little, uh, skeletal yeah thingy that's cool <laughs> yes and it works with raspberry pi os's library camera software stack and in true raspberry pi fashion there is an easy to follow getting started guide for installing the ai camera and setting up the software and running the neural networks and the the camera is actually available for $70 at the usual Raspberry Pi distributors. It's not too bad. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty sweet. And this is also really nice because they're, they're pre, they're, it, Raspberry Pi had another camera that would work with AI, but you had to have a Raspberry Pi 5 kit to use it. Oh. So this is the first time they've, they've brought it. It's to, got all the stuff in the camera so you can. Yeah. 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 So maybe you might be able to get away with using the Raspberry Pi without a active cooling on it. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. Who knew? <laughs> but maybe. Good to see. Love to see it. That's going to do it this week, though, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank each and every one of you making the show possible, just sharing the show, telling people about it, downloading the podcast, leaving comments, feedbacks, hints, and allegations. You know we love it. Also, if you want to put a ring on it, come help us out, because, hey, doing these shows costs money been able to keep it commercial free 14 years you can do that head over to linux gamecast get a support tab best way to support us is on patreon that way i can give you a bunch of stuff as a bonus as a big sloppy thank you like the live and uncut versions of this show pre pre super shows in which is a production meeting we have on saturday nights you get a download video version and of course podcast audio along with sneak peeks you know stuff we're working on and we got libra pay we got paypal we even did the crypto thing because I found out that I can convert that stuff over a new egg into studio hardware, which is nice. And of course, we got Amazon wish list. If you want to pick us up a little present, because who doesn't like presents? Long running gag we've had on the show. Send yeah. in a note. We'll read it <laughs> as like, ha ha ha. So yeah, all that's listed there. And of course, we got a merch store and uh, humble affiliate links. We, we appreciate it. It's been awesome. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, hanging out with yeah. us live. We do this 3 p.m. ish is when we know we, we get going, try to get going like 45, you know, 15 minutes. So, you know, yes. 245 ish, kind of like Linux Gamecast. <laughs> it starts around eight ish. So, uh, yeah, right here <laughs> yeah. on Twitch. It's just a forward slash Linux Gamecast. We do that. And of course, uh, yeah, it's another thing. Um, if you want to come hang out with us on uh, Tuesdays and Fridays, we do the track mania and you can come play on uh, Yay. Trackberry. <laughs> Trackberry might, 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 might be a little bit of a thing. It might, uh, I'm preparing, always prepare for the worst because uh, it very much might for the next couple of weeks be um, standing room only to play track mania with us. And I'm yeah. realistically <laughs> can only have 12 people in there on the uh, raspberry Pi. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> Come in early. There we go. 
Jill, fun show. Yeah. We get to yeah. play around with a bunch of stuff. But now, Absolutely. let's get the bounce of music going on and press the credits button and thank the beautiful people making the show possible. Yeah, we have lots of wonderful patrons to thank, including our advisor, Artharen. We got Steve Husband in chat. We have, have Scoots in chat. We have our executive producers. We have our Chicago Kicks bottom. <laughs> Our sea monsters, who I'm not getting around to reading because it's really flying by, and our death notes, <laughs> and our chairlings. <laughs> you don't even see chairlings. I get to that part, Jill's like, little, I know, little I purple can't... lines on the screen. <laughs> yeah, can't see them. <laughs> I get like that too, man. All right. Hey, everybody. You know what? Get out there. Get up something fun. Remember to come check out uh, Interfacing Linux on Friday for a fun little adventure that I've been working yeah. on. And of course, we'll see you again next week. I'll see everybody, hey. uh, yeah, this Friday. Oh, and Jordan Friday. will be back tomorrow with, um, I think he's doing yeah. some Outer Worlds around 7.30 yeah. p.m. right here. Great game. Live. <laughs> Good times, everybody. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Love you all. <laughs>